Well, hey there, everybody. What's going on? Happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. Uh, it is a very special Friday. It's the day after St. Patrick's Day, and we are just chipper and ready to go. Uh, hopefully, you all had a great, fun time last night. Uh, Nick, yeah. how... Nick? We're having some tech, so Nick, Nick might look like he's doing the robot, uh, but welcome to Office Hours. We, we figured <laughs> like, out... It got and me right there. We do it live. We do it live. Um, all right, so... Nick, what are we doing today here? I'm just going to flip over to this screen so that maybe yeah. it gets better. All right, Nick, what are we doing today for Office Hours? Oh, still a little frozen there. So today is week three, I believe, right, of uh, our yes. Logo Boot Camp. So we're spending five weeks talking about logos. We've gone through the basics. Uh, we did, um, what did we do last week? We did um, word marks. Uh, yes, I believe last yes. week was word marks. Today is going to be logo marks. Logo marks. Um, and yeah. we have some briefs for you. So we want you to fire up Illustrator and you're gonna design along with us today, which is gonna be really fun. Um, and let's take a look at some of the work in Discord here. Nick, do you wanna highlight any of the pieces that we've seen come in in our Discord? Yeah, these look great, everybody. I was so surprised to see not only just how much, but like a lot of detail in some of these. Look at these these first ones here, the plant powered, great colors. Love that one. Someone got into the 3D. That looks great. Yes. I love, look at that, mocked up on the uh, glass window, of course. Yes. Oh, I love the little icon it makes in the middle. Right with the that little top hat. Great. Little, yeah. Little bowler cap. What a great idea. This is really good, guys. This is Unreal. awesome. So. Again, we've been teaching you how to design logos. We're in the middle of a five-week logo boot camp. Uh, Joanne, some Uncle Scoops, great job here, looking great. Uh, Nick, Wandering Bear. So love that. If you are designing along with us today, oh, I love this one for a Korean shaved ice stand uh, yes. from Testero. This is super fun. Stop, it, like, like stop the press. This is great. This, Nick, this actually feels like very you. For like, it, it does? feels like oh, it yeah. kind of feels you that it's like fun and like a little like whimsical, and I could see it in packaging. Like, it it feels it feels right. Thanks, man. It feels okay, right. <laughs> but wonderful work there. Uh, this is great. You guys are really killing it. Oh, and a new Ooh, one. Ooh, ST code with their logo. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and copy this and paste it over into Illustrator ah, so we can go. see it. Perfect. Ah, of course. <laughs> I'm hurting. I'm hurting. All we right, try. Well, we hopefully try. you can see it here. Yeah, hopefully you can see it here. Uh, it's right there. So uh, we want you to post your work as we work along Today, we are doing logo marks. This is like the one, it's all about logos. So go ahead and join right over here, the homework channel. And then you also can join the classroom chat, which is right underneath it. There's already four or five people in there. Uh, you guys can hang out, you can talk. If you wanna come on the show, once you make your logo uh, and explain it to us, we'll be doing that near the end of the show. So let's go ahead and hop in and talk about some logo stuff. Let's do it. So Nick, what's up with logo marks? Man, we are in the, this is the best part. This is where we're talking about how everything comes together. We're gonna create some word marks today, but before we go, we get into like that and having some fun building these together. We even put together some really cool little creative briefs that you're gonna do along with us. Let's talk a little bit about what they are, how to use them, and some principles, maybe even a little history, I think. Ooh, you know you're getting history. It's you know you're getting history. It's a stream with Andrew Hawk Rattle. You know you're mm -hmm. getting history. So Nick, what is a logo mark? Here it is, a logo mark is simply the icon or graphic image that identifies your brand. Usually no words, but it can be inspired by initials. You know, most of these have something in there, just like our Adobe logo as well. Um, and these w logo marks can be part of an overall logo design, but these best ones, it's so good that when they're just left alone and they have that confidence, there's something about them that really just represents the brand without any kind of typography whatsoever. Yep. Who is this U logo? It looks so familiar. You don't know? I don't. Oh, uh, Unilever. Unilever, that's what it is. I can't yeah. believe that they get away with this as a logo because it's so detailed that it doesn't it read is. at small sizes. Uh, and they use it quite well. I think they meet, They might even have a scale version where, you know, when sometimes uh, this, there's so much complexity going on, uh, they make one for use of smaller sizes, which yep. actually has less detail. Which brings us to our next point. Next week, we'll be talking about building out a system of logos. Correct. We'll be talking about making it scalable, making it smaller, bigger. How many variations do we need? A whole lot is the answer. So we'll be covering that next week and building things out. 
Um, so what, any favorites there? I, I, I'm such a big fan of the Atari logo. To me, that is like the one right there in the middle under Twitter. Yeah, uh, I do like the Atari logo. And I actually think the logo that I'm going to work on today is probably I mean, going to be pretty close to the Atari logo, which makes me sad. <laughs> I, get, uh, I get why. But yeah, like, we'll, I see that. we'll see what happens. Um, yep. I think my favorite of the bunch is probably the Mitsubishi logo. It's just oh, so simple um, it is, and dude. so cool. And if you haven't seen this, it's kind of the opposite of the Triforce. If you are a Zelda fan, um, I've always thought, so the Triforce is just like three triangles and it's just like the opposite of that. And so I think it's interesting yeah. that it is like this reversed out, but still makes a great logo. Yeah, I think, yeah, Elizabeth mentioned the CBS logo. I think as well, yep. that will never ever need to be altered. That's like, a Saul Boss, right? Or yep. it's either Saul Boss or Paul Rand. Saul Boss? I think it's Saul Bass. I think it's Saul I Bass. Can't too. Remember. Yep. I, we should know these things. Yeah. But I love the idea. I think you're right too. Even Mitsubishi not being a, a they have their relevancy might have been has been lost over the last ten years. But you Ooh. look at that logo. I'm sorry. Nick yeah, with the I hot just, takes. <laughs> I just threw, I'm a car fanatic, so forget about it. But I I think you're right. I, it was funny. Before you even mentioned it, I'm like, he's going to say Mitsubishi. Yep. Because, again, it's so balanced. It's made up of three squares, you know, or diamonds. And yet it's strong. It's stable. It has energy. It's all the things I think they need it to be. All of these are great, you know, yep. maybe with the exception of one. And uh, if... <laughs> Uh, I will tell you which you, one. Oh, gosh. Um, if you'll remind me, chat, where's chat? Chat is right here. You're actually over here, but I'll look at you here. Chat, remind me to research the history of the Bic logo while Nick is working because I am so curious as to why this exists because it doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah. And, is it's it a, the it's ballpoint? A, it's a ballpoint, but like, why is it a person? So we'll research that. Yeah. I'll give you some hot insider information as Ooh. Nick works. So Nick, look at us. I'm gonna bring have, in, bringing you guys the news. Right. I love it. Uh, I'm yeah. going to have you talk about why logo marks and I'm going to close my go window because they're doing construction. Go. Oh, there you go. Okay. So guys, why are we using a logo mark? Many times the logo are just the most memorable thing that you're going to have. They're at the most simplistic form of the brand is. And what we talked about, I think last week was this idea that it should introduce the brand. It should kind of make the handshake, but you know, that's all it really could, should do. It, it has to represent all of the ethos of the brand, which I think is obviously super important. But I, I picked these because I wanted to show ones that are maybe not familiar. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know any of these. They were from maybe, I think this was from a logo lounge page. So they're probably different designers, different companies for sure. But it doesn't have to be those ones that we keep seeing over and over again to be a great, uh, you know, version of what a logo mark should be, yeah. right? This top one looks like Jamie Stark a little bit. It could be. I think so. Yep. Yeah. I And there's some like Ben Stafford in here, uh, some great people that mm -hmm. y'all need to go follow. Jamie Stark and Ben Stafford, two incredible designers. Yeah. So um, we want strong, memorable representations that will represent your brand when needed. And, and I think it's a great... It's to me, it's like the, the unsolved thing. Like it's like to me, when you can get to that point where you have a, a, a mark and it could represent the company that you're trying to do that sometimes that's the most gratifying thing I think as a designer that yep. to me is like, uh, and it's, it's a tough one too, you know? Yep. So I want to talk about the logos, why we have logos. And we've talked about this a little bit already, but I want to kind of push it through. So logos, again, were used to identify different areas, different people, and they're still used for that today. They go all the way back to ancient Egypt that the uh, pharaohs would often have a scarab like ring or a brooch that they would press into clay so that you knew that it was them, right? So logos have existed forever uh, since early recorded history, like a long time. Um, they've just had different iterations. We've looked at them in printer's marks, right? Watermarks that yeah. are in paper. Um, they're often used to signify different areas. So here's here's a here's a thing that I think is interesting. So if I was going to say the Eagles as a location, mm -hmm. what would you say? Where where would be the answer to the Eagles or the Bulls? If I showed you a, a picture of the oh, Bulls. I would just say Chicago. Yeah. So it's funny because I don't think people realize it is that the history of logos uh, very often, right? Phoenicians and other uh, other societies would use animals to represent areas. And we still do that, right? You think of it, it's just like, yeah. oh, yeah, it's just a basketball team. It's like a bull. And then it's like, nope, it's Chicago. And it 100% goes back to the systems that we use of logos used to represent things like a town, which I think is so interesting. And sports teams are like the yeah. ultimate example of that. 
Oh yeah, the and the incredible soccer work that's coming out of most of these brands now being so respectful to the city and pulling elements that we now know of that city. Yep. Uh, it's Seattle some Kraken. of those are my favorite. Kraken oh, yeah. has one of the best logos of all time. It's my favorite one. It is great. Yeah. Uh, and we do have some of the big history in chat. As we work on this next part, I'll read that oh, to y'all. Um, so Nick, let's hop in. What are we doing today? This is going to be a good exercise. And chat, we want you to fire up Illustrator and look alongside us. Yeah, please do, guys. This is going to be a blast. So we put together two little creative briefs. And this first one we'll take a look at is uh, the first one I'm going to tackle. And um, where, oh, do you have the slide? Oh, yes. Let's talk about there the rules goes. first. Oh, perfect. Oh, this is great. I'm glad you popped this in here. Yes. Very much the principles here. Be simple. Simplistic board marks are easy, easily recognizable, easy to remember. We want to make sure that. This timelessness thing, just like we were talking about with the CBS logo, the Mitsubishi logo, all these ones, ABC, I think they've just done a recent like refresh, but it's literally still the same logo. You want a logo to last 10, 20, 50 years. Like that to me is the goal. So timelessness, don't use trendiness of today, right? Do something that's gonna last. Then you want versatility. This thing's gonna be everywhere. You know, maybe the smallest size would be on your phone or something like that. And then the biggest size might be on the side of a building or in a billboard. So is it versatile enough and then appropriate, right? It's like, is it appropriate for the brand you're saying? And we're going to show you some tips on how you can make sure you're going to design something appropriate from the very beginning. If you just set the rules and the expectations up first. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's get into our challenge, and here we go. This is the first up, and Nick, this challenge is going to be for you. We're going to have yeah. Nick working first, and I will give you the brief, Nick, and then we'll have you work on this logo, and I'll kind of narrate. We'll talk through your process. Um, yes. Chat, we want you as well. I'm going to put this full screen. Take a screenshot um, and design with us, uh, and you can post you over go. in Discord. So, Nick. We need to yeah. design a logo mark for Titan Bank. Um, yes. I would like it to be trustworthy, solid, contemporary, and established. I want it to feel like nice. a little bit of a snooty bank. Um, snooty bank, I love it. Bank. So yes. And Nick, and, you made uh, this brief. What on here is kind of, did you create to help clue us in on what we should make? Yeah, the there's two things I did. I kind of brought in images, what I tend to do when I have words like this, trustworthy, solid, established, whatever, foundation, I'm feeling like, you know, what are these, what are these words we need? I immediately look for like icons and shapes that represent those words, not so much banks, but, but what, what does trust mean? If I saw a shield or a column or these bricks, does that tell me something? Great. So there's a little starting point. Yep. But and my Go ahead. I was going to say, let's talk real quick about those things. So we've talked about the idea of icons, indexes, and symbols. If you missed it, an icon looks like what it is. It's a shield. It looks like a shield. An index is something that gives information, like a smoke would indicate a fire. And then a yeah. symbol is something that's understood within context. And so these um, are really powerful using symbols to communicate some of these ideas, right? The shield is an icon for a shield, but it also is a symbol for strength, for security, yes. right? That it's understood within our context that that shape means security, right? The, the, the column means that it is prestigious. And so start to think about how do symbols, what symbols relate to these words, and then you can start to maybe mesh those and play around with them. Yeah, there you go. And the other thing I put up there, this is a great little chart you can use, particularly with clients. Show these, these examples, there's four quadrants, but you've got top, which is serious. You got bottom, which is whimsical. Left is heritage and right is contemporary. So old, new, fun or serious, right? Yep. And here's the target. We want it to be a little serious and extra contemporary. So like if you look at the bullseye there, that's kind of the mark that maybe you and the uh, client have gone over and that's the expectation you're shooting for. So if you show them something very whimsical, they're going to kind of go, you're, this isn't in line. So everything we were talking about appropriateness, that's your like your cheat sheet right there. Yep. Uh, and we actually have an interesting uh, question from the live chat. Wade, yeah. who's one of our moderators, hi Wade, is saying what cra what's crazy is the trend of rebranding. Um, and I think it's interesting because here's my take on that is mm -hmm. I think that a lot of companies are rebranding because the world is changing so quickly right now that they're trying to respond to that, right? That it's becoming mm -hmm. this response to new movements, new things in society and culture, and they're trying to respond to that. And I think that that's like not good. I think it's great and great rebrands are on the other side of that. They start to dictate what culture is going to be. 
Yeah. Um, and so I think a lot of them kind of fall flat because they're trying to catch up. But then we see some that are rebranding that are doing an incredible job that are kind of defining the future. And those are the ones that I think are successful. Oh, yeah. And there's always the biggest reasons for rebrands right now are uh, predicted growth. Because let's say you're a young company that started a, a Instagram, let's call them, right? And then all of a sudden they blow up and they're this global thing. They had to make a rebrand to be more global, to be more, you know, all those things. So yep. there's, I love examining those reasons why a brand should should do that. All right. Yep. So. All right. So we're going to hop in here. Nick is going to start designing for our Titan Bank. Um, and before Nick, you I mean, you can go start going. But I mean, um, yeah, go yes, for it, man. chat, I want you guys to design with us. And thank you. Elizabeth has posted the slide right here. So you can design with us and you can just post it in the homework channel right here. I'm going to go read about BIC and we are going to uh, watch Nick design. Nick, talk nice. us through where you're starting in your yeah. process. I have this idea to kind of like do the column, do maybe a pendant or a shield type thing, and maybe hint at a T in the in there somewhere. So my I, my thought here was to try something like this, and what I'm gonna do is just kind of make a quick line like this, because I'm gonna subtract it, but I wanna see how this is going to look. Uh, let's see, let's pump this up a little bit. We can always expand it. And then I want to, flip this. So I'm going to go back into here and do my little reflect tool. There we go. And if you're not familiar with Illustrator and you're kind of watching, you're like, oh, how are they doing these things? We want to show you kind of concepts today and kind of show you the workflow of making a logo um, and maybe some some of the ideation. If you want to learn yeah. more, you can actually go to um, behance.net slash challenge slash Illustrator. We have content for you every single day at 11.30 a.m. as a live stream. You also can watch it as uh, replays, but you can check out uh, that page and it has a ton of tutorials, lessons for you to level up your Illustrator skills. So today we're focusing on concepts and kind of showing our process. If you want more, you can come back for the Illustrator 201 in a couple weeks, um, or you can go watch the old episode of Office Hours where we go over Illustrator Basics. There, There's all I kinds of it. options for you. That's great, man. There's so many things we can do. I just made a duplicate of that because if I start to um, subtract things and everything, I want to just have a live version of it. Usually what I do, I, I think I caught this from watching a few uh, designers do their work. They'll literally just option shift uh, drag a duplicate one before doing anything manipulating to it because you want to keep these things as they are and maybe like stages in a way. So. I'm already kind of liking this idea that maybe I could do something here where this could work. So right now these are just lines. If I do wireframe, you'll see they are just lines with a weight to them. I've given them 21 point. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to expand them really quick. Now I'm gonna have these as fills. So you can see the difference. Here we have the line, it's still a line. Here I've just expanded it and now it's actually a shape. Yep, and we've selected that and gone to object expand is the way to do exactly. that. Exactly. Now this is, pretty much let's see if it's centered so i'm going to select both here go here so it looks like i don't think it looks centered does it it's like kind of slightly off here and are what you I... you're trying to do like a um like a t with a shield kind shield. of shield right yeah and i think what i like about this is like if i just take this right now send it to the back so all i did was command shift uh bracket right and that's actually behind it it's still there it's just got a white fill i'm gonna select both Go into my Pathfinder. This is like my my favorite tool. This and Shape Builder, obviously, are the two that really kind of start to become how you can create a mark, yep. how you can do something kind of unique. It's here not as well. centered still, which is yeah, going to isn't kill that me. weird? Yeah, I know. Oh, you know what it is? It's this is my point isn't centered. So, quick way to do it. I'm just going to do a guide here. There it is. So see my point. Oh yeah, you also is off. Oh, that's what it was. So my point was off there. I was just doing it by eye. There we go. Okay. So Shoot, let's shooting get... for the stars. Nick, Nick thinks he's got it. Wow, I hope so. There we go. Whew. Okay, much better there. All right. And then, so we have these columns that are kind of in there as well. And one of the things I was thinking of doing is if we, we almost got a column thing hang, happening, happening already. So I'm going to take the same width and let's see if that in a white 
Is it too thin? Maybe it is, huh? Uh, and that's a getting... great thing, a great tip for working on logos is if you can borrow widths of things, if you can borrow like other yes. pieces of that logo to reuse, it helps to just yeah. lock everything in. So don't do everything exactly. willy nilly. Try to use other pieces of the logo as you build it yeah. into the, the kind of uh, piece that you're working yeah. on. I kind of think that might be enough to show that there's a bit of the column thing. We've got a T happening a little bit as well, which is kind of cool. The one thing I could do too is I could take this now, and one of the things I've been using a lot of lately is the um, is basically the free distort, where you can take these and kind of like give this that like more perspective vibe. Oh yeah, right? that's really cool. And if that's looking good. Maybe too, I think we've expanded the T maybe too much up here. So I'm gonna bring this a little bit down. Ooh. So when I'm in this stage, my first thing to do, oh, it's kind of feeling like the upside down Atari logo a little bit there. I, so I'll do this. Is Atari. <laughs> yeah, I know. By the way, the Art of Atari book is one of my favorite books. If you guys oh, yes. are into that stuff, it's really neat. Okay, so I like this idea. Like I wanna see really small, is this going to still stand up? Is it readable? Is it defining? The, the piece. That's and such a good of, idea. And I've never thought about doing that. I'm always thinking like, how will really? this look small? And I've never zoomed out to just make it small. That's so oh. smart. Or the best thing to do too, is just to take a break, get out of your chair and move far away and yep. look at your screen. I do this. That's always a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 my process. Uh, and I someone Trey is saying uh, maybe try to round the corners on the center or play around with that. And I think yeah. Uh, I think in my process, that's something that I usually do at the end is I'll build everything super sharp and then figure yeah. out how can I make it feel more organic after the fact. Oh, there we go. So yeah, what I like to do is don't just do the whole thing. Have the control of these two are the same anchor, anchor points on those shapes. So I'm just selecting those two and I'm going to do the curve on those, right? Yep. So you're going to get, oops, I've missed this guy. So oh, nice. This one and a lot of one. people in chat are saying that it has Transformers vibes. It totally oh, does. Oh, totally. Oh, yes, I know. I have... Oh, remind me to show you a little, I have it right here at my desk, but it's a little Transformer toy I designed. I loved Transformers, that stuff was so much fun. All right, there we go, I'm kind of digging it. What else can we do? Is there any other solutions? Like, I like the idea of rounding, should we try, I'm gonna just try the top one and see. Um, Make a copy. Yeah. Ooh, that, now way, it's, that way chat can vote uh, left and right. There we go, all right, let's do that. So I'm gonna take this here. We'll do that. And can we do polls? Wait, is that a thing that we can do polls? Some, I saw a poll happen on another stream. If we can do a poll, that would be really cool. Let me know if it's I possible. I like that idea. I um, think you could do, um, uh, I know you could do it on Zoom. We've been using that a lot. It's yes. actually quite fun. Yeah. Um, and maybe let's try to add some color in there and see. Um, I got those like ready to color. go for yeah. it. You have that colors ready? I do. Nick. I went to Adobe Color. <laughs> Color.adobe.com, y'all. <laughs> I love it, I love it. So here's what I got. So let's see, I think I gotta take this guy and let's see, is he separate still? No, okay, so ungroup and this guy is here. So now I'm gonna take this, it looks like it's level. Oh, cause come down one here. So I'm just making sure my alignments are good. I'm gonna center those two. So I know that's dead center to that. Where is it? There we go, perfect. Okay, so let's get this one in the back. And we'll do a minus All right. back and here. We can Oops. do a uh, we can do a poll. So once we oh. lock this one in, we'll do a uh, left versus right poll. Wonderful. Okay, so we are Titan, correct? So I'm gonna do yes. And so how we're gonna work this is hopefully chat. Let's see if anyone is doing this. All right, if you're doing this challenge with us. You can post in Discord. I would love if you would post in Discord. If you have a sketch, if you have anything that you're working on, post in Discord and let us know. Um, and then we will check out that work as well. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this brief for Titan, and then we're gonna do another brief, and then we're gonna switch. So I'm gonna take on Titan, and, and Nick is going to take on the other one. Wonderful. So I found a few cool little, like, you know, not too bad. These I looked up on there and I actually looked up trust. I, I looked up established and I get these color palettes that are kind of like inspired by that. Hey, someone else did the job of finding a color palette that and named it that. So let's take advantage of it, right? I think it's always good to have that that kind of like fun little way of seeing how the colors might work. Right. So I'm kind of I'm kind of digging that. Now we we I'm going to do a, just a bit. I know we're only doing logo marks here, but all I'm going to do here is cancel that 
and let's ungroup this. And all I'm going to do is maybe do a few, like maybe it's the top. Let's see. Ooh, just a little bit of custom rounding. Yeah. That's a great thing to do if you're just working on a logo there is to go. find one element to switch up on that type because then it oh, feels yeah. a little bit more custom. I dig that. All right. So, oh, you know what? I shouldn't have done that. I'm going to copy this and then uh, we'll go back to those rounded. There we go. And now I have a clipping board one. Ooh, that would, <laughs> what is that? You, It's the points that you had selected. So it was oh, the points that you that rounded crazy? and it copied just the points and not the entire thing. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do guys. I'm gonna copy that, it's in the uh, clipboard. We'll go a few undos to get that one and then paste. And now I got my round one here because I think this one goes better here without all the rounded, yep, right? I agree. There we go. All right, so um, some people are just joining us. And so I wanna talk real quick. They're asking, what is this for? Um, I wanna go ahead and give you our brief. So oh, yeah, we are designing a logo mark for Titan Bank. Um, the client wants it to be trustworthy, solid, contemporary, and established. And we're trying to get Nick's process on how he uh, creates logos. And so we have a couple options here for you. Chat, it is now your moment to pick left, or right. We're gonna do a poll. Yes. Do we want left or right being the better option? So right there, left or right. I'm just making some final changes to these two here. We're gonna undo that. There we go. And maybe, oh, and I should even do a maybe a different color palette for this one, huh? Oh yeah. Um, so I always love doing that. Yeah, work on that different color palette and I am going to uh, talk real quick and just read everyone something. Uh, if you're just joining us, we were talking about the Bic logo a little bit while a little while oh, ago. Oh yes. Um, so we have a French designer who did an ad campaign that had a man that was with a, a pen, right? So it looked like this man with a pen, and then eventually it got simplified into the Bic Boy, as it's called, um, and then that eventually became the logo. It stuck around, and that became the logo as it's based on an ad campaign. Um, of the big boy, which I think is wow. so hilarious. I had no, I had no idea where that even came from. That is so cool. Yes, thank I you. I love and that idea. Wade has officially dropped the link in chat for you to all go vote. Um, I'm gonna click on that and watch the votes come in. You can see right here um, we have. Our poll going on. My favorite, I believe. Let me make sure it's on screen. There we go. I think that personally, I like the left one. So I'm gonna vote for left, and all you need to do again is just click on left and then hit vote, and let's see, let's see where things are going. Actually, let's nice. not. I'm not gonna let you guys see it yet. Yeah, don't let. It'll encourage them to vote one way or the other. Well, okay. Honest opinion. Y'all need to go vote because 50/50. Oh, is it 50/50? All right, all right, we're going. All right, go click on those. Uh, and Nick, you've done a couple variations of this, already looking very, very good. This is totally yeah. insane. Um, Thank you, man. Love that. This looks great. And then the other thing I would do is just make maybe a little avatar for like social media or something like that. Yep. Because and we know we're gonna need that. We do have one coming in from our friend uh, Y3RT on Discord. Uh, thanks for Ooh, designing along with us. And I like this actually. So the reason that I really like this one is it reminds me of like an actual bank building. Like this feels yes, like an archway like the, that's yes. like a door. Um, Love that. And it feels like those columns that you see in like a New York, like Wall Street kind of bank. Um, yes. This is really cool. Nice guys. Bravo. I'm digging this. Bravo, YRT. I, I keep wanting to say yurt, which I think is just really funny. A yurt, if you didn't know, again, we're we're off topic, but a yurt is a dwelling. Okay. Y'all, I really appreciate that you're engaging with the stream and that you're like casting this is your votes. Awesome, guys. We're at 50 50. I'm gonna give it another like 10 seconds. We'll do a countdown. 10, okay. 9, 8, 7, 6. Get your votes in. Five. Four, three, two, one. It's still a tie, Nick. It is tied 50 50. We, we did get more votes. Okay, next vote wins. Next vote wins. Whoever hasn't voted, go vote. You will be the winning vote, which I think is hilarious. All right, it is the left wins. That last wow. vote made it through. So the left has won. Bravo. Good job. Um, Very cool. 
I love it, dude. Yeah, right. this is great. Yes. Oh, it's Trey. It's Trey backwards. I love it. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and hop into our second challenge. And if you're designing let's with do us, it. here we go. I'm going to take this one on. Nick, do you want to read me the brief? Yes. I'm going to give you your brief. So you are creating a logo mark for the Beacon Theater. And the client wants a more heritage looking feel, a little more timeless, maybe elegant might be a good word, but prestigious as well. So these were some images that they sent along that I think kind of convey those things, right? Still want to keep it simple, timeless, appropriate, and all those things. But how will you bring in a, a bit of prestige and elegance into this? And note on the little scope there, it is in that quadrant of a much more heritage, but in between whimsical and serious. So you yep. could have a little fun with this one. Yep. So looking at this, when I go into my logo design process, I'm thinking through a bunch of things. So first I'm thinking through um, what kind of hits the zone, right? So to me, heritage and then the serious and whimsical, for me, things that feel geometric, but like, like yeah. locked in, like pattern stuff feels like it can, you know, I want it to be able to be on a step and repeat. I want it to be something yeah. that feels like it is maybe some kind of system that could be used with like photos in it and that kind of stuff. Um, and then when I think of beacon theater, I think of obviously a beacon, right? Of something, some kind of light and then a theater, right? We have all kinds of things that we can work with. So yes. I'm gonna hop over in here um, and I'm just gonna use the brush tool real quick to kind of- I like that you brought up expectations there before even doing anything, which I really, really love. Yeah. Yeah, so I wanna think of like, what are the things that I can play around with that will be like notable that people will understand. So for Beacon, I think of kind of this just like shine thing, right? I was yeah. playing around with the idea of there being some kind of like lighthouse thing, um, but I, I wasn't like crazy about that. And so I think the idea of like a beacon, uh, this is like a, like a telescope. Uh, I think the idea of like this kind of like the idea of a shining beacon, right? And this is what we're talking about, about an index is you don't see the beacon, you just see the light. Mm. I think it'd be interesting. And so I want to play around with like the idea of it being a beacon, but then also the theater is try to play around with this being like curtains. Oh yeah. Right. Great that idea. it could be kind of this like, curtain feel uh, and the, it's opening up with this like ray of light kind of coming through yes the beacon. and and, I, cool. and maybe like keep it in a kind of like boxy shape could be interesting so i want to play around with this and that way we could put photos and stuff in the middle and it could be a really cool like reversed out kind of logo so if you yeah. are designing with us with the beacon let me put that up one more time so that you can take a screenshot and then head to discord so and take a screenshot theater wrong so so sorry <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, isn't it? Shouldn't it be the other way? Theater. 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 Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Great. yeah. Go ahead. Take a screenshot. Work with us in Discord. And you can find that Discord right over there. Discord.gg slash ACC. So, I'm going to play around with this. And what I yeah. want to do is I like to just, like, throw ideas. And so, I want to play around with this idea of kind of, like, repeating circles. Because okay. I think that I could get that kind of idea that I want of this kind of like opening curtains by using circles. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of put these together and then start playing around and see what happens. Um, nice. I wanna try to repeat them. So I'm gonna go to object and then I'm going to go to path and offset path. And that will kind of move them out by a certain amount. So I wanna kind of move by a little bit right there. So that looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm just gonna do that a few times. Um, and I don't know if this is exactly what I want it to be or the effect that I want it to go for, but I do know that these shapes are something that I want to explore. And so oh, I like will- There's a hundred little logos in there I can already see already. Exactly, yeah. Cool. So yeah. I'm not trying to like actually build the logo right now. I'm trying to like explore the shapes, right? And yeah. so I'm gonna play around and I'm gonna crop this in to kind of see where's the middle of this shape. I think it's right here somewhere. Let's see where that anchor point is right there, there. it is. All right. So I'm going to grab this anchor point right here and I'm going to use my uh, rectangle tool to just make a rectangle on that. And you can see it says anchor right there. Yeah. And I'm going to try to make just a square and my smart guides are going to be super helpful to me. Oh boy. Oh boy. All right. Uh, to make this a <laughs> perfect little square. So there let's lock go. it in right there. 
And then I'm just going to center everything uh, together. Is it gonna, it is, all right, let's do this. Let's grab everything, but grab the, the box. Yeah, and then I'm just gonna group that. Go. And then you can actually select, and Nick, you had done this, but I wanna show a different way, is I can select a whole bunch of things, and if I wanna align them, I just have them all selected. I click on what I want it to align it to, and yeah. that makes it the key object. And you can see up here, it changed to a key. And now yes. when I align it, it's gonna align that box straight to the center. Very cool. So let's make this a little bit bigger because I want to have, I know I want an edge. Maybe right What's there. What's really cool is I think it's already giving off, these can be sound waves, this can be light, this can be, and it's all related to theater, which is kind of cool. You got Oh, that's unique, true. It does have like right? a bunch of theater elements to it mm -hmm. uh, in different ways. There you go. Okay, so now let's start looking at kind of pieces that I can pull out. And I know that I want maybe it to pull uh, this open curtain kind of piece. I'm trying to think of what and we- If you guys have any suggestions, here. drop it into chat too. So yes, please. We're, we're, we're a team effort here. Let's yes, see what we got. Yes, team effort. Um, Ooh. Man, I think, I don't know. Let's let's do, I'm just gonna play with another option over here. Mm -hmm. And this time I'm gonna start out with that beacon idea by just yeah. using a, a square. And then I'm gonna you, pull it in here. I was gonna say, if you delete the two original circles and leave all of the ones you made that were, I think that might get some of the complexity out. I don't know. Yeah, I want it to feel like it's opening the opposite way. And so I think that this, gotcha. it feels like it's all kind of just bouncing. So I want it to go the opposite way. And yes, it looks like an eight. Uh, so we're gonna click on these. And this is my favorite thing. If you need to scale things equally to a distance, select your two points here and then use the scale tool. I don't see anyone do this, but use the scale mm -hmm. tool, which is just S and you can click and drag and it will scale those out for you. So really, really easy way to make kind of uh, trapezoids. Yeah, equal. Because yes. if you did a one by one, you know, obviously you're going to be off by the, a tiny little bit. Yep. That looks cool. So I think beacon there, and then maybe I use mm -hmm. the uh, arc tool right here. So let's see what happens with the arc tool. And the arc tool is great. Uh, it's like the line tool, but I can click and drag, and it will drag down, right? You can see it kind of dragging that arc. If I hit up and down, it's going to make that more drastic. Um, if I hit X, I believe it flips to the other side. Yes. And so let's kind of use this to create um, a similar width. I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool right there. Yeah. And see if I can create a similar width that maybe fills all these pieces. And maybe I do want this to go all the way up. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. All right, so maybe we have that and then I'll use the arc tool again and come down here and just do another one. And then maybe we have a third that kind of going right through. Yeah, there you go. Skirts down this way, but maybe this one goes down. Yeah, right through here. There you go. Nice little right on the the edge of that the corner there. Yeah, this and is, this is interesting. now we're feeling it's feeling like the curtains are kind of showing up a little bit. Yeah, it feels too. like we're getting some kind of like curtain. Dig it. I'm gonna try to get the same uh, the same look on these so that they just line up on, uh, let's delete that one. There you See go. if we can start here. And this is what I love about the arc tool is I can start here and then come up and like, oh no, it's wrong. You just hit X um, and then it's right. <laughs> All right, so I'll go there, move this one up a little bit so they're even, and then try to get this aligned a little bit better. Kind of bring this out and up maybe. All right, that's going somewhere. That's going somewhere that I'm not mad about. So I'm gonna replicate these over to the other side. We'll transform, reflect, and copy. And chat, how are you doing? Do you have any suggestions? Yep. I could use some help if you have it. Yeah, there we go. Okay. You can almost like maybe even where they cross into the beacon, they turn white, the, the, the drapes turn white. Oh, that's a great idea. You know, you that's invert, a great you idea. Invert them there. Yep. There you go. Make a little oh, duplicate. And someone is asking, is it intentionally magenta? No. So what I'm doing here, which I think is interesting, is I I keep my brain from thinking about anything other than the form. So I didn't even realize it was a magenta. This could be black. Uh, it could be yeah. literally anything, and I wouldn't really notice. Um, 
because yeah, I'm I love, really just I love every, everybody has very unique kind of ways of building in their own formula and their own recipe, you know, um, we should say too, I think in most cases, you and I would, would, would make a few sketches, do something kind of first. We're doing this for fun to just be like all on Illustrator and show you guys, you know, uh, uh, with the time we get yep. what we would be doing. And you know? do you do this thing where you use shapes to measure things? Oh, all the time. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to use three rectangles here because I want to try to hit um, the center. And so I'm just going to pull out some rulers right here because I think that that could be good um, to use for... I might need three of these. Uh, I might need... We'll see what happens. Uh, but that's going to help me kind of find where these go. So I'm yeah. going to go here gotcha. and then have it come all the way over here. Cool. I might need to loop less i don't know all right then we're going to do another one that is going to be similar loop and loop down a little bit Dang where's it. the center right there loop down here and then maybe we're going to have another one loop all the way down to the corner so let's do this and then let's loop it all the way down into this corner Ooh, i like that these are a little less like centrifugal like they actually are fanning a little yes. bit yep that looks cool yep so then mm -hmm. i'm going to uh do the same thing i'm just gonna copy these and then paste in place so edit paste in place and i'm gonna make them white and then Very we're going to make cool. another copy paste in place of that shape and i'm going to mask them into this here great Ooh. Okay, this is not bad. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and so I'm gonna make a transform and just reflect it to the other side. Ooh. Man, Andrew, not even sure there? you. I'm not even sure you need the reflecting. I I love the one sided kind of like imbalance of it. It feels and it. You know what they also feel like is the um the drama and comedy masks a little bit. Oh yeah, it's getting that vibe in there a little bit too. Oh, I definitely have an idea for that. Uh, mm -hmm. that just gave me a great idea for like the contrast of the comedy vibes, um, is I wonder if we do this. So we go transform, reflect, and we do it horizontal. Oh, right. Nice. And so yeah. we do it the opposite way. So it's still aligned here, but then these go the opposite way. Yeah. There's something to be said about just pure experimentation on the app. And, and a great solution coming out. I love this idea of, of like, you're just playing with the app and all you can do. I love that. Yep, absolutely. Mm. I'm not mad about it. But yeah. You, you know what? Hold on. Hold on. Is it is it better if I just, like... It's... I think it's going to be better. Hold on. With, like, just these. Mm. Right? If this just comes to the center here... And then these just come down to the center here. Okay, and maybe just touch a little too? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's totally up to you. I'm not mad wow, about that's, that. that's cool. And you're right, like I think someone had mentioned that too. It does have the happy and sad theater mask kind of going on there as well. One's a frown and one's a smile. Yeah, look what we accidentally and landed on. And, they're dr and they feel like the curtains. And there's a little bit of a beacon ray of light kind of vibe too. So it's really doing everything. I love these things. Very cool. Yeah, this turned out to be a, a really cool logo. I like this a lot. Um, so yes, this th this is kind of fun. Uh, and I think that maybe, all right, I don't want to spend too much more time on this, but I do want to do one more thing. Is I'm just gonna color going to for you too. Oh, I'm going to reverse it out. So I'm going to go yeah. to object expand. And then we're just gonna uh, create a single shape of this by going to the Pathfinder. And I think that I have some stray points that I'm just gonna kill here real quick. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, it definitely has, uh, I agree, maybe it has a very deco looking feel to it as well. It is very deco. Mm-hmm. So what kind of, as here. he's doing this, what kind of colors should ooh. he start thinking about? Ooh, ooh. Oh, that's like, that's got like uh, old airline vibes too, a little bit there. It does. Right? And so we're mm -hmm. going to do the thing that Nick just did as well. Round oh, out these the corners, pattern. make it really dynamic. I think that looks interesting. Yes. But here's something that I like to do a lot. Uh, and this is another way to get that soft look is I'm actually going to make this a lot thicker. So we're going to give it a little bit less. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, I'm going to make it black okay. and go to effect and go to blur, do Gaussian blur. I'm gonna blur it out by like five and then hit okay. okay. And then I'm going to go to object, rasterize, 
Hit OK. So now it's made it an image, a blurred out image. Yes. And now I just go to my image trace and do a black and white logo. So I have a, a preset that I use for this, but you can use black Same, and white yeah. logo and watch what happens. So it gives us mm. this really cool kind of like soft edges. Organic. And it's, it's better than rounding in my opinion, if you want it to feel a little more organic. Um, so let me work on some colors here. Um, and Nick, do you want to check out the discord? Is there anything happening over in discord? Yeah, I think I just took a quick look. I'm not sure if we got anything else in there yet. Let's see. Oh, yep. Someone's built. We've got a few in there as well. Someone's built something very similar to what you did. That's really cool. We got another one for Titan in there. We got a, a few for Titan. Very cool. So you guys are killing it. This is uh, great. And I'm going to do like a mauve kind of red curtain. Not that color. Mauve. 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 This deep kind of mm. red curtain. Uh, and I then, see some gold in there too, man. Yeah, yeah. So the, here's what I want to yeah. do. And this is going to be the probably. So we're going to have the one on the left that's boring. And then this one, I want to play around with this idea of it having some kind of like almost mosaicness to it. Ooh, yes. All right, cool. So that's that's green. I'm a professional. Yes. Ooh. There we go, right? And then mm -hmm. maybe here it has a little bit of like a maybe let's see what it looks like with a blue. Mm, I don't nice. love it with a blue. Maybe uh, um or like a regal like royal purple. That might work. Let's do a there really dark like oh that looks cool. Love it. There All right. Go. So that was good. And what was the name of our theater? Beacon. Um, it was the Beacon Theater. Love that. So let's do this Definitely got some performing arts center vibes going on there too. Oh, a hundred percent. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just going to grab real quick. I'm going to use my Adobe fonts to sort out into something that is a little bit wider. So I want a sans serif that is wide and very thick yep. um, and nothing is found. What about a little prestigious elegance? in a font too, right? Like maybe maybe balancing it a little bit because you got this like contemporary, but like retro vibe happening with the logo. Oh yeah, Ooh. I love this. Acme is great. Oh, and Acme then just gothic. throw it into here. Mm. And then again, I'm gonna do the thing that Nick did as well, is I am going to uh, do a little bit of customization to this. And great. all that I'm gonna do here is this. Uh, uh, how about that beacon? Uh, yeah. You guys, you guys. And that could be your golden rod color and then beacon out. could be red. Oh, or you even, know what? Yeah. I was just going to pull it out. So if mm. I go to Pathfinder and I just crop this uh, out, right? Then we have this great. almost little beacon yes. going through. Um, there we go. Ooh, that's cool. The beacon. And then it. let's do one more. Oh, I didn't copy it. All right. So <laughs> let, me, let me do this. And I have one more idea. And then chat, we will let you um, we will let you vote on this in just a second. Let me post this over here. And then I'm going to do one more variation of this. And I think what we can do is maybe something like this. And maybe this is not going to work, but we'll see what happens. I wanted to cross that N right Always there. No problem with experimenting. Ooh, nice. I'm mad about it. Like, I don't like it, but... <laughs> I almost think even a with the B, the E, and maybe where the A is, if, the, if you'd leave the A blank without that horizontal, you could do a... Yeah, right in there. You could... There it is. And make it really... Sh like, And that could be your yellow. Or maybe there's a yellow version of it inside of that. A little smaller. Now it yeah. feels like the now it feels like the old like automobile logos, like the you know, but they have that spear going through like the typography. Yeah. Mm. There we go. All right, I'm mad about it and I hate it. All right, so <laughs> um, let's see, left or right chat. Where do we land? Maybe this goes purple. This needs to be red. All right, yeah. left or right. Let's do a uh, let's do a vote. And the font name is Acme Gothic Extra yeah. Wide. Isn't that great? Acme Ugh. Gothic Extra Wide. So here are options. Um, Wade is going to create a quick poll for us. We've got about five minutes left. Um, left or right here for our Beacon Theater? Hey. Dare Beacon I say, theater. I don't want to give my 
my props just yet. Ooh, what was that double? Oh, D there's one there? there's a bunch of stuff. So yes, chat. Look yeah. at this, Wade. Make the uh, make the poll. Yep. Here's the left or right. There we go. All right. Let's check these out because y'all have been doing a great job. So Stephen Booth uh, did a bank and this is interesting. So Nick, thoughts on this and what is this communicating to you? Well, it's saying trust. Yep. It is saying uh, we got the columns in there as well. My only thing of the uneasiness of it being like uh, balancing on that point doesn't feel too structured. Like that's what I would, I would, I would say you go one or the other, maybe have the handshakes incorporated into the, the column itself. And then there's your logo, call yep. it a day. So we have this here and these are again, things that are symbols, right? We have handshake symbolizes trust. The shield symbolizes trust. This uh, symbolizes prestige. So you're using a lot of symbols here, um, which are really good to communicate. Yeah. So we have Cloud Arts doing a Titan Bank. Ooh, this this feels mm. rugged and like metal. <laughs> yeah. To me, it feels, like, like, the it feels door. like a lock. I like the door too. It's like, yeah, you know, we're we're ta we're strong and tough, but come on in. Yeah, it, it feels like um, it does. It, it definitely feels like a lock. Um, and so mm -hmm. I like that it. I like that you've incorporated that. Anytime that you can do an icon with a symbol, right? That it's an icon for a lock because it looks like a lock, but then it has a symbol, which is the T. Anytime yes. you can get the mix of those two, that's magic for logos. Oh yeah. Um, I picked. I picked these knowing like with Titan, the T is one of the fav the best like letters to work with when it comes to like marks, yep, you know? Absolutely. Uh, this is great. You're the asymmetrical curtains. Uh, and then there we go. We have Steven with the masks and the curtains as well. Ooh, this is a yeah. great idea too. This is the beacon yes. and the B being the curtains. That's a great idea. And that's a great, like, I love that approach because when you have something like the B that is not symmetrical, right? You can't cut it in half and it's the same on both sides. Just by flipping it and doing that, you automatically get the B to work and it has this uniform piece. It's really cool. Yep. All right. So That's let's awesome. look at the results of our poll. Again, if you have not voted, we need you to vote for the left or the right. Um, Nick, do you want to give us a, a little countdown here? Yes. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. And the over overwhelming winner here is the right. So on the right, uh, it looks like we have found our winner. It is this for the Beacon Theater um, looking great. Can't go and wrong. Fantastic. Can't go wrong there. Can't go wrong there. It's just a one color version of your logo. Yep. So you got two for the price of one. Yep, just one color. So I do want to uh, call something out real quick. And Nick's camera is getting a little bit wonky. And All so right, guys. We're, yeah. it, it, it's going to freeze a little bit. Sorry, Nick. Um, That's okay. Go let's it, actually here. Let's let's toss to Nick to Nick's screen so we don't have to have him full screen. Um, there we go. Sorry. Uh, so I want to talk about something that's coming up next week, and there's something very special happening on uh, Adobe Live. If you're watching this live, hello, welcome. If you're watching the replay, it's probably happening right now. Um, yes. But there are going to be some awesome events happening next week. Our friends at Behance and our Behance live streaming friends are completely taking over Adobe Live. It's going to be an incredible week. So make sure you tune in at uh, behance.net slash uh, Adobe Live. But one that we want to call out is one of our favorite people here on the show because he is a, he is a, a, a kindred spirit. Um, we have our friend Jamie Brindle coming on. Uh, how many of you follow him on TikTok, on Instagram? Um Jamie is an incredible uh, person that gives great advice for freelancers, um, a lot of great insight. So mark your calendars. Wade is going to drop the link in chat for you. Um, click on it and you can notify. Do your notification. Come to the stream, behance.net slash Adobe Live, uh, and tune in for Jamie Brindle. And if you go, uh, let them know that Office Hour sent you. Yes, um, good idea. Right? Right? Just a little little, little raid there. Mm-hmm. Um, and all right. So Nick. What's yes. happening next week in our show? Let's talk about our show that we do. So we are going to be doing logo systems next week. We're bringing it all together and showing you how, and we should start with these, right? These should be our ones to make our logo system with. Oh, I think that'd yes. Be great. Yes. I need to make mine better. I, okay. Here's the, here's the reality. And this is, we, we keep it a hundred with you here on office hours. I'm not super happy with my logo. Nix is really good. Um, so I'll probably work on this more before next week and hopefully you do as well. Uh, I think it's okay, but I think there's room here, but I definitely think for a system, it'll be great to build this out. And then we'll be talking about building a brand a little bit later. So Nix Perfect. is fantastic and amazing. Um, but we will be scaling this out. And what does it mean to build a logo system? 
we want you to have the entire toolkit, right? You're gonna have your logo badge. You're gonna have your one that's more horizontal. You're gonna have your social media one. Maybe we do multiple colored ones. We do reversed out ones. It's endless as far as what you can do. And again, number one reason I love doing it is it allows you to charge more as a logo designer yes, because now you, can do a whole you are package. a branding designer. Yep, exactly. Absolutely. So thanks for joining us this week. As always, you can join our Discord at discord.gg slash ACC. Um, if you're watching this anytime other than 2.30 p.m. Pacific time on behance.net slash Adobe Live uh, and you're on YouTube, go ahead, join the Discord. You can still post your work. We'll love to see it. Um, and to close out the show, some incredible work from Frank. This looks awesome. Awesome. What a Whoa. great idea. We've got a shield mm. and a column. This is great. Love that. And a T. Yes. This is <laughs> and a T. Oh my gosh. Best of show. Best That's, of show. Yes. Right best there. of show. Congratulations. Um, we will see you all next week for another episode. We're here every Friday, 2.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Behance.net slash Adobe Live. Bye. Bye guys.